is up my fellow mobile gamers in today's video we are taking a look at the best landmarks in cookie run kingdom which ones you should prioritize getting first and which ones just don't have that much of an impact on the game all right so let's jump on over to our build and then we are going to go into decors so there is a bunch of different themes and as you level up your castle you will unlock additional themes so if you're a brand new player you probably won't see some of these later ones over here but not to worry you will unlock them eventually i believe castle level five unlocks all the theme all right so i'm just going to kind of go in order and then just kind of give like a brief overview of my thoughts my opinions uh which ones i prioritize which ones i think are good which ones i think are not so good so first up we have is crispy cookie town this is my number one the TikTok clock tower if you've watched any of my other videos on cookie run kingdom you will know i highly always suggest this i always mention the TikTok clock tower this is like my favorite you're definitely going to want to get this as early as possible because it reduces your production times and you may not notice it early on when you just start out but once you get deeper into the game some of these items i mean they take 17 minutes you know some of them take 20 minutes 30 minutes you know just to basically produce one item having the TikTok clock tower will help reduce that time and of course you can upgrade your tower all the way up to level 10 right now i have it at level five so i'm getting a five percent reduction next up we are going into the witches and ghosts area and we have the eerie haunted house which will increase our crit chance this is a very very good one for battles Again, this is going to depend on the way you want to play the game. I believe there's there's kind of like two different ways you can play the game. You can kind of prioritize building up your kingdom and working on productions and focus more on building up or you could focus more on the battling aspect of it. But this is really good if you want to focus mainly on battle. I say this is a, a really good one, probably in my top five. I wouldn't say this is better than the, the TikTok clock tower, but this is definitely in my top five. I suggest this is definitely one worth getting, but it definitely will help make the battles a little bit easier. Uh, next up, we are going into the blade and magic theme. We have the Molten Magma Mountain. This is going to reduce our railroad trading time. At first, this might not seem like, oh, it's not a huge difference, you know, especially when you initially buy it, it's only 1%. You're gonna take uh, 10 of these rarity compass things. Really, really good for late game. I mean, early game, when you unlock the, the train station, you're only gonna have this one train, right? We are in the process of upgrading our castle to six. So we're gonna be a uh, castle six soon. So we're gonna get that extra train slot. Especially when you get to eight and you have all three train slots, you want this train to be coming and going as fast as possible because you want to get all those rarities. This is a, one of the best ways to get rarities. At the very beginning, you're not going to see a huge difference, but I feel like once you get two of these trains rolling, I feel like once you get to Castle Six, you definitely want to start to look into that and see, you know, is the time really uh, affecting me? You know, that's one thing you gotta you gotta take into consideration is is it is it bothering you per se? You know, are you somebody who's like, oh my god, this is taking so long. I wish this would be faster. You know, then you would definitely prioritize this. But if you're somebody who's like, oh, you know, I don't mind waiting the two three hours for the train to come back for the rewards. You know, if you're more casual and you're not trying to rush it, then you know this isn't like a, a huge important landmark. But it definitely will help out late game like during the end game when you're trying to get all those rarities this is a really good one so I, again i would kind of put this in the top five category it's going to help out overall with just production times you know just speeding things up uh next up we're taking a look at the kingdom of snow and ice so we have the ever winter snow globe this is going to increase our defense so this is going to be for our battles this is one that's gonna help out a tremendous amount. Again, this one is a little bit more expensive because initially it's a lot of coin and it's 15 of these rarities, 15 of them. Like that's a lot, right? But we get a 5% increase for our defense. I definitely think this is a huge one. Um, if you're focusing more on battles, 
definitely get this one. I will put this in probably like my top three. I would say this is definitely gonna just give your characters more survivability. All right, next up we have the Sculpture Park and we have the Dreaming Jelly Lion statue. This will give us an increase in attack. This one I got, this one I prioritized. I think this was the second one I got. I personally highly suggest this one just increases your attack. Like, you know what I mean? You wanna put out more damage. Anything that lets you put out more damage is always top of the line like you want to put out as much damage as you can this will just again help you just run through the pvp battle so much easier help you run through the quests uh, so much easier the bounties overall just increasing your attack is huge so i would put this one at my number two right so we got the the clock tower number one I think this one right here, increasing our attack, has to be number two. I feel like this is so important. Helped out so much for battles. Uh, next up, we have the flower garden, and we have this will give us an increase in HP. Again, this is 2,400 blue crystals, and that's it. So no rarities, nothing else, just straight up crystals. This is not a bad purchase. Again, this is going to help us with our battles. I would definitely put this again in like the top five. It's just gonna give your characters more survivability, but it's definitely not better than the attack. All right, next up we have is the Garden of Delights and we have the Grand Dessert Tower. This is gonna reduce our recharge time for stamina jellies. Again, this is something that you're really gonna have to base on your play style. This only costs 3,000 blue crystals. But again, this is going to depend on how much you play the game. I can't really tell you if this one's gonna be better for you or not. You just kinda have to take a look at, you know, if you're playing the game a lot and you notice that, oh my gosh, you're always running out of, of your, you know, stamina jellies. Next up, we're going at the bustling amusement park. And we have the Ferris wheel, which will generate soul stones. So this is 4,000 blue crystals. Now, again, this is going to depend on your play style. I think this is definitely a good one. It's going to generate you a soul stone. Do you prefer the gotcha system or would you rather go with like a Ferris wheel, like a building that will generate you soul stones over time? It's something that's going to pay off for itself in the wrong run. So if we look at it, like initially it's 4,000 blue crystals, right? So if we go over and we look at the gotcha system, all right, 4,000 blue crystals. That gets us what? 10 draws, all right? 10 draws um, and then an extra like three. So we'll say like 13 draws. Depending on your pulls, you could get pretty good pulls. You could get pretty average pulls. Let's just say you get a few characters that's worth like 20 soul stones. You know, 20, 40, 60, 80, you know, you're going to get like maybe a hundred soul stones. Whereas this thing, it's going to take you a long time before you really see the value. This is a huge investment. You're going to get more out of this over time. So this kind of just depends a lot on if you're going to keep playing the game, you know, the longer you play the game, the more value you're going to get from this building. Um, and then we are at the Pew Pew Arcade. We have the Gumball Arcade Machine. Again, this is the same thing. It's a soul stone. Next up, we have the Crimson Badlands. We have the Dark Lord's Castle. This is another one that I uh, prioritize. This was the third one that I unlocked because I thought this one was very important. This will increase our damage resistance. This will just kind of stop us from taking damage, which is super huge. Like damage resistance is better than defense. That's why I prioritize this. And I also leveled this up a bit because I just don't want my characters to really take any damage. Like next up, we have the Starry Knight and this will receive extra coins from battles. Again, this one is very expensive. Um, it's 200,000 coins. And then you're gonna need 20 of these rarity compass things. It's very, very good uh, long run. Like over time, again, this is a huge investment. Initially, you won't see your, uh, your money's worth. You really won't notice a big difference. This is going to help out in the long run. So I highly suggest this one. I haven't had a chance to get this one yet. The, the 20 is just, uh, 20 of these rarities is a lot. I just haven't been able to save up. Coin is the life of this game. You know, you always need coins. So this is one of my top three. 
I need to, this is something that I kind of put off and I definitely think you need to jump on this. The extra coins helped out so much. Finally, we are at the industrial adventure and we have the croissant zeppelin, not to be confused with Led Zeppelin. <laughs> uh, this will reduce our balloon expedition time. Uh, again, this is 20 of these rarities, 200,000 coins, a lot of coins. Again, though, this is something that's just going to help out a tremendous amount. Again, I will put this in probably my top five because it's like free resources. You know, you kind of just set it and forget it, right? <laughs> you just send your characters on an expedition and they come back. And if you could do it even faster, then that's better. It's just literally free resources. But I think that's one that's definitely very important. I hope you enjoyed the video. Hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button for more Cookie Run Kingdom videos. I love you guys and girls. I hope you guys are staying safe, staying happy. And we have a huge snowstorm coming where I live. We're supposed to get like a foot of snow within the next couple days. So it's going to be crazy here. But I love you guys. I'll see you later. Peace.